Just give it a little tap. We've got enough pressure. Here's my micro hydraulic ram pump in action, getting a, um, a steady trickle of water flowing down from above. We'll get into flow rates later. Um, at the moment, I've got water just gravity feeding in just here, firing down and actually pumping water uphill. Let's have a look at the pump's construction and then we'll get back to this setup. Here's the, um, the ram pump you've just seen. Um, it's pretty. It's pretty simple design. With this ramp pump, I've been able to get up to 250 liters um, a day kind of pump rates. The um, the main body of the pump is made up out of um, one of these pumps that is used for dispensing kind of soap. Um, I picked these up off uh, Amazon. I think it was. Um, I think I managed to get five of them for 14 quid. So really, really decent prices. Um, they have a couple of valves in them, so they've got a valve up here at the top and a valve hit down here at the bottom. These the valves in this one are made up out of just a um, if you move the spring, just literally a ball bearing and a carrier. So this ball bearing will um, seat against the bottom down there, and um, when that's seated in that little hole, it obviously prevents liquid from travelling back down. So really, really, really simple design. You get a couple of different methods of creating the one with us. So this one is a ball bearing. You also get a little plastic flap. Um, I kind of prefer the plastic flappers. I seem to get better pump rates out of them, but these still work just fine. Um, as well as that, we've got a couple of T's. So we've actually got um, one T just there at the top. I believe this is a six mil exterior diameter. Um, and these are 13 millimeter diameter on those. So basically we've got, we've got an air chamber that receives pressure um, and compresses some air, so this is always going to have air in it. Water flies along, it hits this one way valve, a little bit comes out, jams the valve shut, um, that causes a back wave of pressure which comes up here and it shoots up through this one way valve, um, which allows water, as I say, to move that way. Um, hits here, pushes through a little spike of pressure, compresses the air in this bottle. This one-way valve then stops, will not let return flow go down. So as this air expands again, that forces up our drive line, and this is where our drive line um, will be attached. As soon as um, the pressure kind of drops in this bottom half, this spring here, mounted on the very tip, is then able to um, push that ball bearing valve back in. Um, or the little flap valve back in, which allows a little more water to come out and starts the cycle over again. So it goes tap, 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 tap. Um, super, super simple. To do this, all we need to do is we need to work out where our ball bearing valves are. So, uh, there'll be one at the bottom. The other one is up here somewhere. So see where it actually is. If you pop out the top and then you can look up in there, you'll see it's located right at the very end of the spout, which means it's up here somewhere. All we do is we cut in the centre of this section. Um, th that enables us to then make these two together. This will then mount to there. For that, I've literally used some rubber hose. This is out of a um, an old washing machine, I think it was, um, and a couple of clips that were in there. The type of clips I've used are these. You can just get away with using Jubilee clips. So just this style of Jubilee skip that you screw up and tighten. Um, it really doesn't matter as long as these are, are sealed. When you're mating them together, try to get as little of a gap as possible so they're actually overlapping each other um, or pressed up against each other. That's because we don't want any of this flexible tube to be in the system. We want all this to be as rigid as possible. Perfect. So really, really simple there. Um, the only kind of real modification we need to make is if your pump under here, we'll pop that off. You'll have two little holes there. As this um, plunger goes in, the force of the water may well push the plunger back far enough that these holes will leak slightly. If that happens, super, super easy to solve. All we're going to do is we're going to take a cable tie. We're just going to put a cable tie around the stem. What that does is it just forces the piston in 
another few mil um, so that we don't have problems with water coming out of those holes. So let's just push that piston that a little bit further in. The assembly on the end is, um, is super simple. It's just a piece of threaded bar, um, or you can use a bolt. For this one here, I've used a bolt, just cut off. We've got a washer on there, and um, that's all held in place by a Jubilee clip. You want about an inch or so of um, threaded bar sticking out. And onto that, I've taken a small section of wire, made a loop in it, and then a little pin. And that little pin is holding a spring just out of a standard pen. We're looking for the lightest spring we can possibly really get our hands on. And that's what that assembly is there. On the end, um, I've just got a nylock nut on this one. Um, I tend to you start off using just a, um, a standard nut, just so they're easier to adjust. And then I'll swap it out for a nylock when I'm kind of happy with the pump and how it's running. The water's currently pouring out of the, um, the base. All I'm going to do, I'm going to come down here. I'm going to pull the spring out until it stops the flow and then just release it. It's currently pressed up against the, um, the ball bearing. Nothing's happening. So all I'm going to do is just give it a, little, a couple of little flicks. Try and get it to start pulsing. Just undo that kink. One second, I've got a little bit of kink in the line. So, I'm going to play around with my spring just there we go. And at this point, all I've done is I've wound the nut in, and so it's just touching the ball there enough so that it starts to release pressure. So we've got it tapping away. We'll, um, we'll start to notice our, the water level rise slightly in the bottle we've got um, as it starts to fill it full of air, and sorry, as it starts to compress the air in there and water moves up to fill that void. The, um, the pump may well cut out, but don't worry about it, just restart it and, like, in this early stage of it pressurising everything. I'm going to come back to the top now, it's sticking away, and excess water, I'm literally just going to turn the tap off, so there's just enough water running in. The only reason I'm doing that is just to stop my garage ending up a swimming pool. That's tapping away. Can you see where this water's at? Oh, there we go. Coming out of the top already. Fantastic. I don't know if you can make that out. I'll come and grab the camera for you. I've just reduced that down. Well, I don't know if you can hear you. It's quite an irregular heartbeat at the moment. So all we're going to do, I'm just going to go in. I'm just going to try and purge a bit of water out. Yeah, let's just see if we can get any any air bubbles out of the system. You normally find it'll do like a little reverb if there's air trapped in the system. So then, working out the um, the amount of flow you've got is super super simple. All we're gonna do is we're gonna head up. We're gonna get a stopwatch and. We're going to start the stopwatch as we put the, we're going to see how much water comes out in 30 seconds. You can go start at 15 seconds, you can do it in 6. Tommy Dash is measuring the amount of water. Uh, so I'm just going to give it to her first. Uh, for 30 seconds. Coming to look at that, what have we got? Looks as though we've got um, just yeah about 65 millilitres. Times that by two for how much per minute. So we're talking um, 130 millilitres um, a minute. I'll do the math for that and I'll put it up on screen for you. Um, so brilliant. That's the, uh, the system in place. So that's the micro hydraulic ram pump. Super simple. Um, had a little look at the um, building of it, kind of set up, how to run it. A few last little considerations is, we mentioned that everything on this side of the pump wants to remain as rigid as possible. That includes your drive line. Ideally, you want in fairly thick wall pipe. This is what I currently use as, um, as my drive line. It's kind of like an Alcatheny pipe. The reason is the, um, the shock wave 
will travel up this pipe and anywhere it can be absorbed, that'll lessen your pumping effect. With not having a um, what would be called a sniffler valve, which allows air to get up into this air chamber as well, this air chamber over time, the um, air will be diffused out into the water. So every few weeks, I've run these currently for um, three weeks as long as to have one continuously running. I've not had problems with it yet, but in long term, you'll find that the air pocket will diminish. All you need to do to sort that out is just unscrew, let the water out, um, and then screw it back on, um, and that'll replenish the air in there. These should run for a fair amount of time. As I say, I am, I've only had them fitted for three weeks continuously so far, um, but I'll be quite happy to hear from people or send me a message and we'll see how long they're still running for as they're gonna to continue to run. As ever, thank you very much for watching. Let me know how you get on. My next video is gonna be on the applications I'm using for these and where I've got them set up. Um, and it'd be great to hear from you if you've got any advice on how to make it better, if you make one, what you've done with it. Um, and if not, be sure to subscribe. Thanks. Cheers.